Welcome to episode 12 of Bandwagon. I'm your host, Eric Nelson. I want to thank Matt Cox for being here on our last episode. Um, it was really great having Matt in here. Uh, it was great to share some stories, some laughs, and uh, the guy's just a phenomenal songwriter. And uh, it was great to uh, play his new song, uh, Wanted Man. It's not released yet, but uh, we played that. And then if you have not checked out his single, Ballad of the Wolf, that he released on January 6th, then you need to go on and check that out because it's really, really good. And I also want to thank our, our producers, Owen Justice and Lizzie Roberts, and of course our executive producer, Skinny Webb, for making everything look and sound great every episode. So our guest that we're having with us this evening, um, I've known this guy for a few years now, and uh, actually he uh, has been on the road for the past few months, and uh, he just played in Denver last night. Yep, a little and private gig. he drove from Denver to here to the studio. Like I got here five minutes before the guy and he just came in and sat down and played a little bit of music with me. And uh, so it's really good to have him here. Um, welcome Appreciate Dan Lydon. Appreciate it. How you been? Pretty good, man, pretty good. good. man. Awesome. Driving all over the country, awesome. that's right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, no, it's a, it was a long drive across the beautiful scenery that is Nebraska, yep, yep, yep. long high 80, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but at least it's straight and fast and that was about it. Didn't cool. have much trouble. How was the show so, last night? It was all right, just a small little private gig. Yeah. So I've been cool. getting a lot of those lately, which right. is great. You know? Good. Yeah, nice. absolutely. Very good, so, man. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, really, my entire goal is, yeah, just to see the country. I mean, yeah. you know, it's been 16 states in the last five months, 16 wow. states nice. and like 5,000 wow. miles. Nice. And at one point, that was in a van that probably shouldn't have been on the road. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little sketchy, just me and a dog, but it's cool. That it was like a lot for fun. a story or a song, though. 100%. Sure. 100%. Yeah, right. so I'm one of those guys that I have to experience something to write a song and so yeah, cool. I was like off on the road let's go Newt so let her the dog in and yeah. off we went so yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you've been doing this for a few months and I'm sure the song's been pouring out of you then Got a lot of songs written, yeah. Um, got a lot of songs written, and it's uh, you know, and it's one of those things where you know they just kind of naturally write themselves, and yeah. so I'm excited. Uh, you know, I got a bunch. Haven't really presented them to the band or anything like that yet, just because pure fact is I, we haven't had more than five minutes to sit down. We got a gig in a week, and we still haven't practiced. So <laughs> it's, uh, since our last show, which I think was 2022, yeah. maybe yeah. like beginning of the year. So, uh, but yeah, no, um, got a lot of songs pouring out. Um, looking forward to doing some recording here this. Spring. Spring. And awesome. uh, yeah, trying to do just put a few more out. Um, we got you know two albums out now, and yeah, it's cool. very cool. Yeah, cool. And the last album we put out it was Daniel C and the Hometown Heroes Volume Two. Correct. And uh, we, uh, I'm with Pony Creek, mm -hmm. and a lot of people know yeah, that already. Absolutely. But, yep. but we played at that Cedar Release party absolutely. with you guys, and that was that right was before you went on the road. And that was the great played, yeah. and, that, and that was a great time. And there were some awesome songs on that album. Thank you. By the way, it. and on the first album as well. Yeah, no, I appreciate so, it. I'm, I'm very, I'm extremely proud of both. And yeah. like, yeah, every time, uh, you know, uh, I met Ryan uh, through Dan Olson. So like okay. uh, the yeah. first, uh, Dan was on one of your podcasts here not too yeah. long ago, yeah. when you're, or yeah. one of the bandwagon episodes. Yeah. And uh, we opened for him a couple of times. And then I met Ryan and it just kind of clicked. He liked music. He uh, liked to have a few cocktails, had a big dog. Like yeah. it was just yeah. everything, yeah. everything fell into place. And so, yeah, I try to play with you guys as much as possible. And uh, yeah, the CD release, that slowdown was a lot of fun. Oh, that was a um, great time. Great crowd. People. And yep. I mean, gosh, so, it always just sounds so good. It's great. To absolutely. The oh, yeah. I love the slowdown. Love the waiting room. Love kind of all Omaha yeah. venues. Uh, you realize when you get out on the road that... Uh, we're kind of blessed with the sound engineers that we have at all these different oh, places, yeah, you know, sure. where you're trying to do sound check. You're like, hey, I can't hear anything. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. And uh, obviously uh, our sponsor, Jack Daniels, kind of came through and pulled pretty yeah. big on that one. And so yeah. they are staying on board for this next gig as well. Very, very, so, very good. Man. Yeah. Good deal. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what's crazy up, up to that, now we're both from Red Oak. Correct. And... What's crazy is until like a couple of years ago, our paths never really crossed. Nope, no, no. And I, I, I heard you, and you, put, I knew you played and, nope. I, and all that, but I, I, I never seen you play. But that's the yeah. thing too is when you're playing and you're and you're gigging all the time, you don't see other people. You don't go see you other bands. Yeah, you Correct. miss a lot of stuff. Correct. No. But yeah, until we played, I think it was the first time we played at the waiting room. I think probably uh, with you. Yep. Probably and yeah. That, a few years ago. And yeah. That, yeah. So, that and then cool. we we played a couple times after oh, yeah. that, and and have hung out more since then. So I've gotten to know you a little bit more. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy to think that like the Red Oak, the musicians that come out of Red Oak, because honestly. Town of what five six thousand people, yeah. and I can name 
five to 10 artists within 50 miles of there yeah. that are all very talented. Yeah. And so it's kind of crazy. So I know. Yeah. I know. Um, and so, no. Um, yeah. And but, you, anywhere you go, any direction you go, you got that too mm -hmm. in, in any yeah. area. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you, oh, might not, you might not 100%. know of everybody in that area. Correct. But it's the same scene. Correct. Or the same. I like to be area. naive and just think that Southwest Iowa yeah. is the best oh, yeah. one, you yeah, know? I like to be a little yeah. like, humble and be yeah. like, no, I come from a place that they're all way yeah. better than you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, no, actually, that's where the hometown heroes came in our name is, yeah. uh, you know, at one point we were uh, Nick Woods, Skinny Webb, yeah. um, Harry Newland, who yeah. is an okay bass player. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's my best friend, too, yeah. so I can say what I want. But, uh, yeah, no. Um, you know, it was one of those things where we recorded our first album without a name, and somebody said, ah, you're playing with all the heroes from the hometown. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, there you go. Cool. And so, and I always wanted to be a Beastie Boy, so my, my name was going to be DJ Danny C. Oh, okay. And, uh, I was going to, that was one yeah. thing I was going to ask. I was like, well, yeah. what's the Danny C? Yeah, so the okay. middle, my middle name's Chapman, and so, uh, okay. yeah, I was all DJ right. Danny C, and so it was just Danny C in the hometown heroes. Oh, so, right. yeah. that, makes, that makes great sense. Absolutely, okay, absolutely. Well, cool. so. When did you start writing music? Oh, I didn't. So, I mean, I picked up the guitar later than most. I didn't pick up the guitar like well into my 20s. Okay. Um, and then it just kind of was like just getting out of college, last year of college. And uh, I started off with a lot of funny songs and tried yeah. to went kind of that went that comedy route. Yeah. And then played a few weddings and some random stuff like that. And then I really got serious with writing in probably 2017, 18. Okay. Um, Originally, that first album, we went in there with four songs written, ready to go. And then I wrote six while we were in the studio. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it was like one of those things where it was like, oh, I'm sure Nick was just hating me. Because he was like, no, no, no. <laughs> like, listen to this, Nick. Like, I got a new song. I wrote it five minutes ago. And we're going to play it. And so, you know, uh, yeah. And so same way with Harry. Everybody was trying to learn right there in the studio. And then we'd ship it off to Skinny to kind of do the overdubs yep. and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, so then dove into that. And then... Um, just one of those things where as I played more, I kind of realized that I wanted to be myself. I'm, I'm too stubborn to like sit there and play mm -hmm. covers all night long and things like that. Yeah. Like it was like, no, like, I mean, I guess I, you can call it arrogance or what, but you're like, hey, I have something I want to say and you're yeah. going to listen. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. yeah, and so. It's not arrogance, you're doing what you want to do. Correct, correct. You're, it's you're just, just more drawing passion. a line in the sand and saying, this correct. is what I'm going to yeah, do. Yeah, because I mean, I That's love great. other music, but yeah, it's yeah. one of those things where it's like, no, I can write these, I can do these, yeah. so yeah. Yep. And that's what, what I've done over the years. I've always done a blend of both, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. you know, so people. And get, so, yeah, a lot of these solo gigs, these small yeah. venues, that's what they want. And it's perfect. Like, mm -hmm. it's fine. You know, mm -hmm. play some Chris Stapleton tunes, scream at the mic a little bit. And yep. everybody loves it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep, so, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. What else you got for me? What? The, so what is probably your biggest inspiration, whether it's someone or something that uh, prompted you? Or is still um, prompting you through music? You know, it's a... Uh when I dove, I dove into, there's some guys in Red Oak, and obviously growing up, I listened to a lot of local bands, um, like in Omaha, like I listened to Pomeroy, I listened to all mm -hmm. those guys, mm -hmm. Grasshopper Takeover, like yeah. kind of learned all these guys, and then um, probably in my early 20s, I started breaking into the classics, like Chris Christopherson, Willie Nelson, yeah, you yeah. know, kind of all of them, and I'm like, those guys are they're pretty sweet. I want to like, I want to be yeah, like them. Yeah. I want to be that rebel. Like, you know, yeah. I want to be that, you know? And so kind of push towards that. And then obviously the, throughout my life, the more things that happen, the almost, I feel like songwriting is almost like a muscle. Like the more you use it, the better it is, yeah. the easier it is. I yeah. mean, I don't know about the better, but um, yeah. the easier it is, you know, more songs you kick out, you know, just, it just all of a sudden becomes second nature. It's yeah. like, you know, I can write a couple songs here today. Like, so now I just block time that's out. That's a great way to look at it. You know, and that's, I block time out like every week. And it's one of those things where, you know, it's like, all right, well, a Thursday from noon to five, I just got to find a quiet place by myself. And that's awesome. I see, I've never even considered doing anything. Yeah, it's almost like a job. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 And so, I mean, I've kind of got, when it comes to me, I'll sit down and do it. But I yep. never, I've never went out saying, I'm going to sit down and write a song. And that, mm -hmm. that's cool. I sure wish yeah. I could tap into that. Man. Yeah. And, I, and I, the whole thing is also is like, somebody told me once, and I can't remember who it was. And I'm sure there's a huge, you know, I'm sure at some point somebody famous said it. But it's not everyone's going to be a winner. Yeah. Um, I always say, like, girlfriends, not everyone's going to be a winner. <laughs> but, uh, um, but it's one of those things where you just write songs as, as much as you can. And, like, so, like, you know, for this song that we're going to play today, um, I wrote probably... 
20 verses to it. Yeah. And then I just start, well, that's stupid. Start yeah. crossing that out. Like, yeah, Shaving well, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want her to know the songs about her. Like, you know, yeah. just kind of cross things <laughs> off until I get to the point where I'm like, all right, well, here's the four verses that yep. I want to keep. So, um, yeah, so I kind of do that. But, um, no, my inspiration has always been, um, you know, my classic inspiration would be Willie Nelson, uh, Leonard Skinner, Waylon Jennings. Uh, yep. Then you get into, like, Bruce Springsteen, Van mm-hmm. Morrison. Um, love soul music. Um, best album ever created was Etta James, that last album, and not for that song. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I just kind of, I kind of pull from all that stuff. And that's what I kind of always said. I was like, well, if Bruce Springsteen and Willie Nelson had a kid, but they were, grew up in the 90s listening to all that stuff, that's basically yeah. where I kind of nice. come off of. So, nice. yeah. And so, um, yeah, no, modern inspirations, there's a lot of them out there. There is, you know, obviously, all I love all the Omaha bands. I've never felt like uh, there is that competitiveness, but I've never never felt that competitiveness like at least with people i hang out maybe i just choose to not hang out with people that are super competitive (laughs) like you know because like uh sack lions you guys own justice like i've never felt like it's like i need to drag anybody down it's more along the lines oh you guys are playing a gig like sweet i'll come like you know like you know it's the type of thing so um but no i uh I pull inspiration from over there. So in a roundabout of your long yeah. question, long yeah. answer, short no, no, question. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so you got come from a musical family at all? You have uh, family that plays music? No, no. Um, grew up. Uh, my mom can sing. Uh, my sisters, they can both sing, but nobody's ever really played guitar or pushed, yeah. pushed the envelope at all. And I think... Uh, that might have been part of why I kind of grabbed it. When you're the youngest of five kids, yeah. you kind of find things that, like, you, gotta find you know, something to it's like, stand out. yeah, so, like, you know, every time I did something, it would be my mom or dad would be, you know, well, your brother Joe did that at one point, your sister Kate did that at one yeah. point, your brother Nick, you know, Chris, like, they mm-hmm. all did it. And I picked up a guitar and, like, Nobody can say anything. Yeah. Like, sweet. <laughs> this, is, this one's mine. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, but no, they all kind of, they all sing pr- very well. At least the women in my family do. Uh, never grew up listening to a lot of music. Um, I uh, grew up kind of with uh, my sister's grade, which would be what the grade that Nick Woods is in, the class of 2000 yeah. from Red Oak. And uh, I hung out with them. They all kind of had siblings my age as well. And so just kind of learned music through those guys. Yeah, very so, cool. So, yeah. Absolutely. But no, um, yeah, I love it all. I'm ready to, I'm ready to play more any yeah, day, yeah. you know, so I'll drive across the country for it. That's what I did today. <laughs> so, yeah. So I got an, a little question here. What do you think is the perfect ingredient in a great song? I know there's so many, there's so many ingredients. Mm-hmm. There, there's so many. Um, there's no wrong answer. No, there's no, and once again, this would probably just be my opinion. Um, one is, um, got to have a catchy hook you got to have something yep. something that somebody yep. taps their toe here's uh the other thing i'd say is original content so basically you can't have a song that anybody's like well they sound just like this yep. or you know or hey that's this song but just redone like yep. you gotta have original content like whether it be the music where it'll be the lyrics etc and then portray emotion i mean that's yep. the hardest part yep. so i mean and basically i've always felt like you know you can watch somebody sing a song that's not that skilled at singing or playing guitar but if they show up and they have a hook that's catchy mm-hmm. they have a content that you're like that's kind of weird but i like it and then they have, you know, emotion portrayed in it, then that's, yeah. that's a three system win. Oh, so that's right. Yeah. I mean, not all the times, but yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, that's kind of what I always feel is just kind of put yourself out there as, uh, you know, as a songwriter, you are, uh, and I'm sure you guys do the same, you do the same way. And I'm sure Owen feels the same way. And everybody is, you almost kind of like you're airing your dirty laundry out in front of people. Yeah. yeah. And so um, you do that. And generally that's the, that's the key to win because the people that kind of hold back and reserve, yeah. they never make it real far. For sure. From what I've seen. Well, you know, what's nice about it too is, you know, when you say not ultra competitive mm-hmm. people, but I think with songwriting, Oh, and, and playing an instrument, there is that competitiveness. Always, because you you want to you want to be the best. You mm-hmm. want to you want to write the best song. You want to play the best guitar riff. But at the end of the day, you love watching everybody else do the Correct. same thing. And when yeah. they write something great or they play something great, you're like, dude, that was awesome. I 100%. wish I'd have done that. You know, 100%. but but it's but it, 
Yeah, so I think that you kind of need that little bit of competitiveness. It's almost that fight or flight response. Like, you know, like, you know, as you see somebody up there and you see a great songwriter and they wrote a great song, they played acoustic, and you can either think, well, I should just sell my guitars and be done. Yeah. No, no, I need to figure out how to do that. Like, you know, and I'm sure it's the same with like, you know, guitar players. Like, you know, you watch a guitar player, like, holy hell. Like, I'm going to, you can either choose I'm done or I'm going home to practice. So, well, and that's the thing is, uh, you know, you just got to realize, I know I do, is mm-hmm. I'm not the best in the world. I'll never be the best in the world. Nope. And thank God I have plenty to work toward. 100%. I'll never, I'll, I'll die trying. Correct. And I'll, I'll be entertained every step of the 100%. way. 100%. You know? yeah, so, a, I mean, it's. It's a road. Like, yeah, yeah, like, exactly. Like, I enjoy it. And yeah. so, the, like we were talking beforehand, like, the minute that music isn't enjoyable is the minute that I'm not doing it anymore. Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. So, oh, what else you got for me? That's, yeah, that's a great question. Well, um, I was just going to ask you, I guess, before we play a song, uh, what do you, uh, what do you have planned for 2023? You said doing some recording, did you say in the spring maybe? Yeah, so I'm looking at doing some recording, um, either, you know, here in Omaha or out towards maybe Colorado. Um, I've met a lot of cool people on the road. Mm -hmm. Um, So I want to kind of get everybody involved Mm -hmm. and just kind of like, it's it's cool to see different processes of people. Mm -hmm. Um, Instead of going to the same studio all the time, it's nice to mix it up and almost like, you know, it's cool to be able to like, you know, somebody you've recorded with is used to your tendencies. You go somewhere else, they're like, you know, that engineer is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, whoa, whoa, man. Yeah. You sound like dog shit. I got to fix this. So, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. you know, and uh, so do some recording. Um, I don't know when this uh, will be released, but uh, January 21st, which would be a week from this Saturday, we play at the waiting room, the cool. full band, uh, bringing in my one of my new friends, Morgan Miles, who, if you know, if you've watched The Voice, she was on it, and uh, she... Uh, we uh, we've nicknamed it Beauty and the Beast because <laughs> yeah, nice. she's gorgeous. She can sing great. She's super talented. Um, I've honestly never heard a voice live like hers, and really? it's one of those ones where it's it's pretty mind boggling. And so yeah, so she's gonna open up for us, and I'm excited to play with her. And uh, Very cool. yeah, that's so great. Man. Jack Daniels repping, and yeah, right all on. that good stuff. So right on. Yeah. Well, so you got. Uh, you got uh, any other plans going out on the road again? Uh, soon, yep. Or? So I'll be so week after the show, I'll be down in Texas, okay. um, down by San Antonio. Uh, got a little private gig there, and then I'm gonna wander the earth until I got a private gig out in Vail in March. Nice. <laughs> Mountain Towns, where it's at, and uh, yeah. And so I don't know. I might, I might go back to Nashville for a little bit. I might go to Austin for a little bit. Um, Austin's one of my favorite yeah, music, it's cool music city. towns. Absolutely. I, mean, I was there for a couple. Basically a day and a half. We went there and partied pretty hard. That was, that was a couple days, a couple Absolutely. full days. Then we had to leave. Uh, yeah, nope. So <laughs> I would almost put Austin above Nashville, and that's, I mean, I'm sure I'm going to get yelled at a lot for that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Nashville and Austin is just a bunch of blues guys ready to yeah. party it up. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, other than that, record some of these new songs, hang out with the band, uh, hang out with family. Um, kind of being on the road, you kind of miss just hanging out with your friends. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I told Harry I'd come spend some time with him and just kind of hang out. And, cool, just saw him last weekend. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Where, where were you guys at? Uh, we were at 518 in Red Oak. I, oh, that's right, Ryan, uh, Ryan played. I did a solo show. Uh, absolutely. And I, I played Pony Creek songs, got up and did some lead with him. And stuff. Cool. And Harry was there. So good absolutely. Bit, absolutely, so. yeah. yeah. No, so, yeah, no, um, that's really all I got playing and uh cool. yeah write that's some more songs Not, that's a, yeah, yeah that's right. all i've got that's all <laughs> that's i got yeah, the next few months got a lot going on but uh yeah no just continue to write songs cool. and uh yeah uh the week after that i guess i think everybody in this room is nominated for an oea at some point <laughs> so we're gonna go to the, that red carpet and cool. you know i already told the jack daniels rep to start stocking them up right on. yeah the hometown right heroes on. and have a tendency to drink heavily <laughs> so, um so yeah so are you going to that uh, I think so. Oh, yeah? Cool. Are you guys going to go? Yeah, I was, on I was planning on it. Cool. Yeah, no. I, I missed the last I missed the last one. Well, the last few, I think, have been online. I think they've been all, with COVID, they didn't actually have, like, a Oh, maybe they didn't. Well, maybe I don't know about last year, but I know they were four. I together. But, but yeah, no. So we're nominated for a couple of those. And so, um, Very yeah. cool. Yeah. We'll go drink and have some food and. That's great, buddy. Hang out. We'll have to pull our tables together. Yeah, right on. There you go. See so see which band can take the most shots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what song are we going to play? Uh, we're going to play a song that I wrote uh, kind of as the beginning, um, as I kind of went on this trip. It's called Better Days, um, and it's basically a man's 
search for better days. Kind of, yeah. you know, at one point, everybody kind of has those low times and maybe has a bad day or, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a string of bad days. And yeah. this song is about my chase, my search for better days. Right on, buddy. So well, I appreciate for, it. Well, yeah, man. Well, thanks for coming in. It's always, Absolutely, always man. great to hang, man. Absolutely, yeah. for sure. So right. we'll Take see you soon. Thank you. I'm right Well, maybe I'm wrong Well, inside's a fire Yeah, and outside's a song And I see your face And every window I pass Well, God's great mistake Yes, it is.